you about two different things here. You know, we've been spending a lot of time, we spending a lot of time talking about the elbow placement and the shoulder rotation on the shot. And so I got into discussion with Randy Scott, the director of tennis at Prim Tennis Center, Prim Tennis Center, uh, www.primtenniscenter.org, or uh, Chiang Mai Prim Tennis, and you'll find this tennis academy. It's for the foremost tennis academy in Asia. Uh, they, they're an international school that also provides boarding, and they run a full-time tennis program. Okay, they run a team elite. The team travels around all of Asia playing tournaments. He was on his way to Malaysia to play an ITF, and then from there he went to The team elite player was going. Uh, he also run like after-school adult programs. Um, if you're really interested in tra traveling and tennis, Chiang Mai is an option. Also, it's a really good thing too. You know, people don't think about this, but within Asia, costs are pretty low. Like to attend the academy full time is like twelve thousand U.S. dollars. Could up be a thousand dollars a month. You know. And they do online learning in the United States, so it's a WAS certified program. Okay, but we're discussing, um, you know, the elbow and the shoulder. And I've been really talking about this rotation thing. And the next level was, well, now you know, we have this elbow and the shoulder. Well, how do you teach it? And it was really interesting, you know, because his theory and I thought about it too. Like when I'm teaching the forehand, I'll talk about my theory first, and I'll go on to discuss his theory. My theory is, you know. I'm going to just drop and hit, and the kid's going to hit the shot. I'm going to, what I like to do is I'll drop and hit and demo. I will demonstrate the shot to the children. I'll show them the grip. I'll break my, my shot down. I'll go, okay, contact's here. You know, you want to follow through here. You want to do a little C swing. Make impact go up through, and you want to follow through straight out here. You know, and, and at the basic level, we, we do stuff like point to the back fence, point to the front fence. And that's the basic, basic teaching. You know, and we don't worry about the elbow or the shoulder, you know, and then we let the kids kind of just kind of do it and swing. You know, and then after they kind of get the swing going, we start talking to them. Because, like, a lot of times they'll, they'll have, well, the first thing that happens is they'll have a floppy wrist. And they'll hit a farm, and, you know, they'll do stuff like this. So we work on the swing and going out to your target, going out to your target, you know. And then later, as they achieve, like, some sense of, I got a swing, I got a swing, then we add in, well, let's now talk about all the other things, you know. In the demo, we show them proper form. And I like doing demos and showing proper form because then I'm not articulating. I'm not saying all these things to the kids, you know, or to the, the adult learning how to play. I just kind of just do it. Bam. And I want them to see it in their head, have an image, and they go and do it. And, and a lot of times when you show it and you mimic and you go visual, they'll learn it. And then you kind of do an audio thing to reinforce because some people like to hear it. And lastly, you know, when they're doing it, I go out there and I show them. But I'm not concerned about elbow placement. You know, later I'm, I'm real concerned about elbow placement. I tell them I want the elbow in, I want to rotate here, and I want to launch the arm. And that's about as close to elbow placement that I get. I'll even do a drill where they have a ball close, and, it, and they make impact, and then the ball falls out, and they release the arm. And I tell them, when the ball falls out, I want it to fall out right there, right here. So it's going to fall right by your front foot. That way you know the elbow's releasing and the arm's coming out. Okay. And so when we got into this discussion, uh, the big problem we had was how do we teach it? And it was really interesting because he said basically, I don't worry about elbow placement, I worry about shoulder rotation. And when you're teaching it, that makes sense. You know? Elbow placement and shoulder rotation are things that are real high level and you don't do that step one. It's more like intermediate step to advanced step where you better. Okay. So think about that. Another thing too is I brought these two things here. Um, this is a foam ball. Uh, this is one by head, tip. This is one by Wilson. And people are like, what's the use of the foam ball? The foam ball bounces like a normal tennis ball. The foam ball does not hurt. The foam ball is great for volleys, great for little kids, you know, and I've actually seen the foam ball being used with high level co college players because they're trying to increase the spins and the rotation of the normal ball, so they use a foam ball. Because when you hit a foam ball, um, yes, it bounces like a tennis ball. It moves through the air sort of like a tennis ball, 
but it does slow down a lot in the air. So if you're going serve sign to serve sign, it plays like a tennis ball. But as you get farther and farther away from each other, it starts the, the friction through the air starts to become an imp, uh, impact, and the ball does not play like a tennis ball. But serve sign to serve sign, it plays like a tennis ball. So you use it to create more revolutions in the ball. Great learning tool, and this is a great learning tool for little kids. It doesn't hurt. Like when you body this, and a kid gets hit in the face, this this hurts. You know, I'm using this with my baby right now. Of course, my baby's nine months old. But you know, the idea here is the idea here is you're going to make you're going to teach the forehand, and I would start with foam balls for little kids. Teaching the forehand, and then you worry about elbow rotation later. And so think about the foam ball. Try to find some. They're kind of expensive. Like this cost me. I bought three. It was four hundred ninety baht. It was about thirteen dollars. But the foam ball does last a long time. And actually, to me, it's an indoor ball. Like I can play this foam ball in the house because it doesn't do anything. It it has like no momentum when when it hits people. So think about that and think about the forehand and the shoulder.